Welcome to the latest edition of the CORE podcast series. Today we are bringing you a council recap video of the town's special meeting from last Thursday, April 9th, 2020. I'm joined once again by Jerry Powers. Uh, again, we are doing this by video conference uh, in light of the current public health crisis, which is something that uh, will certainly relate to the topic of our discussion today. Welcome, Jerry. Thanks, Adrian. So we had a town council meeting last week, and at this meeting, the town was going to consider uh, whether to put the petition for a ballot initiative to change the form of government to the commission manager model on an election uh, ballot for either August of 2020 or November of 2020. Yeah, and they, they actually divided those two questions into two different sections. And I want to set the stage for the audience because if you don't, if, you know, we've been following, you and I have been following this. We know about some of the sleight of hand and smokescreen that goes on in, at the town in order to ram through a pre-approved agenda without the full democratic process of open debate. And the only reason, I, everybody knows, I think, that the, the founding fathers debated everything and fully and completely and the reason they did it is so that you could make the best decisions possible that reflected the will of the people so the only reason not to do that is if you have a hidden agenda that you want to keep hidden you want to ram through a particular outcome and you and you don't have the good reasons to do it so you, because you could argue that in a debate. So instead, you set it all up ahead of time to go bam, 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 without debate, suppress debate, and that way you don't have to, to worry about the will of the pesky public that you represent. You can hammer through your own agenda, and that's what happened here. Well, and we certainly thought that that issue was foreshadowed in our last video, where we said, said that we are always trying to find out what the town is doing in the dark, making sure that there's no bait and switch, and we noted how these, uh, how this agenda item about whether to hold the election in August or delay it to November was, was bifurcated, as you said, split into two parts. And of course, the part that the town wanted to uh, push, which was delay, was noticed first. And the way to do it in strict adherence to the law was listed second. We had an inkling that what they were gonna do is act on the first item and never get to the second. Right, and we can play this short clip where the mayor is calling for a motion. And the, nor the way this is normally done, the mayor calls for a motion, and if it, was, if it wasn't divided into two, he would have said, I want a motion to discuss and take action on whether we're holding a special election or we're gonna do it in November. And then they could discuss it openly, fully, the way it's the, the proper way to do it so the best decision could be made. Instead, the mayor starts to read a, a call for a motion. He has to read it all the way through. He gets interrupted by Councillor Abrams before he can get out a full sentence so that Abrams can get in and select one of those that he wants, which was the first one, uh, which is not to hold a special election the way people had petition, but to push it off into November. So we can play that short clip and you'll see what I mean. Items in, uh, I'll ask for a motion to approve Town of Edgewood Resolution number 2020-06, an election Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Hold on, hold on. Chair hasn't recognized anybody to speak yet. Mr. Abrams, you were speaking. Mr. Mayor, I would like to make the motion to approve the Town of Edgewood Resolution 2020-06, an election resolution calling for the question to be added to the ballot of the New Mexico general election to be held on Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020, on the question of whether the Town of Edgewood should form as a commission manager form of government. Do I have a second? Well, having seen the clip, Jerry, it, it appears that... Uh, uh, what has happened is government has turned into a race and whoever is first to speak gets to declare the will of the government and uh, the people have to take what they're fed, I suppose. Right. So now they can only discuss 
the resolution that is, uh, the, the, since they divided it into two parts, they can only just discuss the part they want. They can't fully discuss the special election that was called for by the will of the people that signed the, our petition. So why would they do this? You know, this is something you and I have followed this. We know how nefarious things happen in town government. That's why CORE was formed. And that's why we're doing what we're doing to transform this government back into an open system where the best decisions can get made because there's full debate, full disclosure, full input from the public. So they, they suppressed it by selecting one of those and bifurcating it into two pieces. Then they go about trying to discuss this uh, and then it's supported by Abrams under one of the thinnest of guys. By the way, at some point in time, I had hopes that we could persuade counselors, Holly, and Abrams who vote lockstep with the mayor that, that they could do the right thing. I have given up that entirely after their behavior. At the beginning of my comments in the meeting, I said, you're gonna make a monumental decision and it's either gonna be a monumental milestone for Edgewood where, and where the will of the people is respected or it's gonna be a monumental mistake. Well, they made a monumental mistake. So they voted lockstep on the very thinnest of grounds. Councillor Abrams talking about he doesn't think we can meet the timelines. Well, you can't meet the timelines when you don't want to. But these timelines had already been mapped out. Even the town attorney said there was a window of about three weeks in August that they could make this happen. That's, that's done all the time. So the disingenuous comments by Councillor Abrams are astoundingly bad. If that's all you've got, you know, you should not be in office if you can't meet timelines that everybody else meets all the time. Well, you talk about the will of the people, and there were a number of folks who called in uh, to give public comment. And uh, we certainly appreciate all those who did call in. It uh, wasn't 100% intuitive for everybody to figure out how to sign into that uh, virtual teleconference. But uh, all of the public comments that I heard, Jerry, in my recollection were to say, uh, we want you to do what is right, follow the law, and hold the election in August of 2020. That's exactly right. And I think there were 10 email comments that were sent in. Nine of the 10 were in favor of the August. One was in favor of uh, November. And they just completely disregard that input and do what they want to do. Now, Councillor Holly made some comments, and we'll play that clip. Um, the November election of option, in my opinion, is consistent with what the previous vote and decision by this council decided back in December 19th of 2018. At that time, this council voted unanimously to opt into the new election cycle outlined in the Local Election Act passed by the New Mexico legislature that year. The driving factors of that decision by this council were the cost savings to the town by combining all nonpartisan elections on the same ballot and the potential increase in voter turnout by holding all elections in November because typically standalone elections have poor voter turnout. None of these factors have changed since our vote in 2018. If this ballot question is put to the voters in November, it will save the town the cost of a special election with a potentially larger voter turnout, especially due to the presidential election this year. Thank you. Um, so here she's talking about the decision to push it off to November this time is consistent with them opting into the local election act to sync up all elections in November. Well, the law specifically says when there's a petition presented, you shall hold a special election. So her comments are completely disingenuous. These, these, this kind of behavior is abhorrent in public office to say, we made a decision back then, and now we're gonna, because of that, we're gonna ignore the law and do what we wanna do anyway to extend our terms to 2021. So 
The other thing she did was a sneaky bit of sleight of hand. And I'm getting so tired of this, but it, it happens all the time. It's why we're doing what we're doing is she ignores the fact that people were for the local election act because it, it sinks it up in November. That's fine. I, I'm even in favor of that, except on these occasions where a special election is called for by law. But the other thing that, that she omitted, it's kind of like a lie of omission. She didn't address the fact that nobody was in favor of them extending their terms. And they snuck that in at that meeting uh, instead of reducing their terms by three months and staying within their, their elected term of four years, the mayor is going to be up and the other two counselors for almost six years. So yeah. this commissioner manager election, had we held it, had they held it at special election in August, could have had held them to uh, election. Everybody would have had to run for election on that council as new commissioners in November of this year. Recognizing that, knowing that, they orchestrated this little kangaroo action to ram through that agenda and once again make sure that they're unelected un and in office until 2021. Which is a long time from now. And... Uh... I would agree with you. It certainly appears on its face that the action that they took last Thursday had the effect of undoing the people's desire to have an election for new officials who will listen to what the people ask for. Yeah, it's absolute proof. If, they, if anybody in the audience had any question at any point in time, about whether or not these people are totally self-serving and, and will ignore any kind of input from the public, no matter how dramatic, in order to accomplish their agenda, this meeting proved that. Well, and I was also somewhat shocked by the uh, rebuttal from the mayor, which was to say that public comment is a game of addition, and whoever has the most numbers wins the game, and you've got five, six, seven people speaking against this, maybe 10 emails submitted to the town, but you weren't here on the night that we passed this uh, ordinance to, to opt into the Local Election Act. And because you weren't there on day one, you don't get to argue about it now. And well, it's almost like the fruit of the poisonous tree. I mean, they, I wasn't there the day they planted it, but as I look at it now, the fruit is evil. And it needs to be undone. Right. And of course, it's a ridiculous argument. This is what I'm talking about. When you don't have a good argument, you'll come up with one to try to justify whatever you want to do if, if you're not interested in the will of the people. So he's, he's saying there were only, you, you people weren't there back then. And the people that were there, there were three of them that spoke in favor of the Local Election Act. So you have no voice in what's going on. But then we show up in numbers. Uh, through a petition signature with over 120 some voters on it and another 30 or 40 people that were outside the town. Um, and the, he doesn't, somehow that doesn't matter. It, ma it would have mattered back then if we showed up in numbers, but today doesn't matter. Well, I'll tell you this, the situation that we're dealing with now really goes to illustrate why the move to the commission manager form of government is such a good idea. We, as the public, entrust our public officials to do what is right, what's in the interest of the people, and certainly to, to, to refrain from giving us stuff that we don't want or ask for, particularly when it's expensive. Under right. this new form of government, if that happens, while we're not vigilant because we assume these people are going to do their jobs as expected, then we can vote to overturn these types of measures. That's exactly right. And the whole idea of the checks and balances in, in America and the American Republic form of government uh, was to decentralize power. Don't let too much of it get aggregated in one agency or one part of the government. Well, that's exactly what they've done here. The mayor actually originally appointed Holly, and she has been lockstep with him ever since. Counselor Abrams is, in my point, now a lost cause because he, he proved that at this last meeting. Um, 
they have allowed the mayor to aggregate too much power and the councilor mayor form of government kind of allows that as well it can happen you have to you can abuse that power as councilor mayor it's much much more difficult to do in a commissioner manager form of government where every commissioner is elected from a district within edgewood edgewood would have five districts every district would have to make sure would would have access to their particular commissioner. So this voting lockstep is much less likely to happen because they have to represent the segment of Edgewood where they live. These are their neighbors. Correct. Correct. So I want to talk about one other thing that is in same, it's the same story over and over here, but they use various tools to try to suppress full debate. And one of the things that happens here is You'll see in a minute this clip where uh, Councillor Abrams actually interrupts, injects himself into when somebody else has the floor, uh, Aud Audrey Jaramillo has the floor. She's trying to have a full debate and flesh this out. And he does something in Robert's Rules of Orders, which, uh, which is called calling the question. It's, but he's using it completely inappropriately, uh, not the way it was designed. So the idea is, if you think debate has been dragging on way too long and it's just going circular, you can say, make a motion to call the question, but only once you've been recognized out of the floor. You can't just rudely interrupt somebody and, and do this. So then you can have a second on your motion. If somebody seconds it, you vote as to whether to end debate. Well, they're not doing that. He jumps in, rudely interrupts Armio, says, I call the question, then expects a full vote. But let's play that short clip. Mr. Mayor. Mayor. Yes, sir. Councilor Armio, Mr. Abrams got the floor first. Go ahead, Mr. Abrams. Mr. Mayor, I call the question. Okay, the question's been called. Mayor, you do need to allow for a second round of comments and also I had mentioned a motion that needs to be made on the language. Uh, Councilor, Mr. Mayor, the question has been called. Ms. Mr. Abrams, did you have something else to say? I was going to say that uh, we, 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 I have called the question. Right. Well, I tell you that clip, Jerry, certainly illustrates the, uh, the issues that have concerned us for so long about town government here in Edgewood is that it seems like in addition to uh, a voting block that you've described before, the three to two vote that we always get, um, there's also become this process by which whoever is shouting first and shouting loudest gets to control the way that the town votes because they dictate the question that gets presented uh, to the governing body for an, uh, uh, an I or a nay. Yeah, I would, I would say this town government is, is government by bullying. And we've seen that time and again with some of the outrageous behavior by the mayor, calling people names from the podium, uh, saying horrible things about uh, members of the community that don't agree with them. Now, in a respectful democracy, this idea of time-honored debate is where everybody is respected. They, they get to fully disclose their points of view, and then it can be out there uh, where people can say, I'm for that, or I'm against that, or I like that, or I don't like that. Uh, it's, it's a way to facilitate government by the people. But if you don't want government by the people, which they have demonstrated time and time again, then you do it by bully. You shut down debate. You rudely interrupt, you intimidate through your actions by uh, calling, they're, 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 they've called some of the counselors' names on, on a, in a public forum. It's just really abhorrent behavior, but it does point out one thing. They don't want people to run this government. They don't want the will of the people here to prevail. They want to run the government from a top-down, hierarchical aristocracy like the king used to. And what I say goes, and everybody else can go hang. So that's what we've seen. And like you pointed out, that's why we're doing what we're doing with CORE. And that's also why we are uh, promoting the commissioner manager vote to allow people to decide for a more democratic form of government. No, absolutely. 
there's another point that I want to make, and it's, it slipped my mind a little bit, but I think it's coming back to me. Here it is, Jerry. I think you and I would agree that we believe in the free marketplace of ideas and let the best idea win. Exactly. That's why we're not even offended by the fact that we have uh, some opposition, at least in our efforts to bring transparency to local government. I can't remember their name offhand, uh, but I, I certainly mean them no disrespect by that remark. But, uh, you know, if they've got a different viewpoint on issues like the sewer line extension, the EPCOR takeover, let them be heard. And yeah. in comparison We're to what we say, if people decide that their ideas are better, then they will prevail. Well, as you know, Adrian, at all of our uh, public meetings, the two, the two public forums we've had, we recognized uh, the opposition that there's three or four people in town that, that, have, that regularly attend our meetings and they'll speak on behalf of the mayor's point of view. Uh, we, we encourage them to speak. We allow them to speak. And we opened it up to the audience. I remember uh, Cheryl Hepperts, I think, attended one of our, uh, our, la our last public forum and was concerned, expressed concern about, well, I'm concerned about the commissioner manager forum because we may not get enough people to run. Well, I don't think we can get five people. So the, the beauty of opening it up and letting her express that, I asked the question, well, how many people here would consider running or who would consider running? Five, six hands shot up right away. Because if she had a point and nobody wanted to run, I'm, I want to know that. You want to know that because, as you said, we want to make the best – do we want the best decisions and ideas to prevail? Absolutely. And we're not getting that from the governing body when the people who are speaking, at, who, who have viewpoints that are contrary to the mayor, are essentially told in one way or another to be quiet or shut up. Right. And I believe – that that's because the mayor cannot defend his ideas. There's no good justification for some of the things they've done, as you well know. Um, and we'll be talking about that in some upcoming videos as well and, and some communications to the public about what's happening with the mismanagement of our sewer system and how bad it's gotten to the point of being dangerous. And now they wanna take over and run our water system when they can't manage what they've got in a safe way. Yeah, and certainly water is much more important because it affects all of us. At this point, the sewer, not so many. Exactly. Well, in terms of what happened last week, we are sad to report that the town voted to delay the election on the petition to change the form of government for the town of Edgewood to the commission manager model. But Rest assured, at some point, this election will take place. And when it does, it's one of the most important issues that uh, you could vote on because this is local government. This is the stuff that affects you directly. Yeah, I, I want to I really, uh, the audience, to understand this, doesn't, this wasn't necessarily unexpected. They are doing everything they can do, whether legal or not, whether appropriate or not, to suppress the democratic will of the people in town that, to get their own agenda across. And I want people to know this has done nothing but to firm our resolve. It's more proof about why we need to do what we're doing and why we need to prevail. And we are taking every action and we'll continue to do that. We're, we're taking input from the public about other ways of accomplishing this open and transparent government. And we intend to prevail on this issue eventually because there's this is what people want, and this is what they deserve, and this, this is what they should have in it. Well, I have been told that you reap what you sow, and I know that there are a couple of counselors on the governing body who have really sowed good seed. They have tried to stand up for and protect the citizens of the town of Edgewood, and for that, we are grateful. I want to thank the audience. I want to thank the, the people in Edgewood, the residents and citizens who have stood up. And whatever level of participation that is, it all matters. Just being, staying informed, being informed, watching what happens, and then eventually voting on this commission manager form of government is absolutely vital. Some people have contributed money. Some have contributed their time. And I'm not grading those uh, as more important or less. It's all important. 
just watching these videos, staying uh, abreast of what's happening and talking about it with your neighbors so that they know we're watching them. They know that we are not uh, being fooled by some of these covert actions they're taking to accomplish their hidden agenda. So I just want to thank everybody for their participation at every level. And I certainly mirror those remarks. This is Adrian Terry and Jerry Powers bringing you the latest edition of the CORE podcast series, a council recap of the April 9th, 2020 special meeting. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again soon.